Welcome back to how to hold a pencil. Okay, here you are. It's a dreary day outside. We've got our little pencils and our stumps, and I've sharpened the electric eraser, and I'm going to show you what we're going to do with this. I just uh, sharpened it on a piece of sandpaper, and you can just do that. Just take it, turn it on, sharpens right up. Okay. Today we're talking, well, let's go back to the first, uh, first lesson where we did a can, okay? Remember? Move our hand like this. Make a box like so. Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, here's your lines. Then we take and make an ellipse. That's the back. This is the front. We do the same up here. Draw it down. Draw it over. Okay, canned round, here's the center. Our light source is from somewhere over here. Okay, or back here. Okay, but at any rate, this side is going to be dark. Now see how our, just come in and just start doing it. Now you can take, and here's what we're going to do. Lay your pencil down like this, so you're using the side of the pencil. And go like this. Covering a lot more territory in less time. And you can blend it a little easier when you come out. If you'll notice. Okay, you're coming out here and just get out get white. And then just leave this white. There's not much going on over there. But what you want, you've got a curve. See? Like so. I'm not going to do the whole thing, but you get the idea. And then this over here is going to be dark. A little dark. That's in shade. Okay, you see it? The gradation coming down through there. Now, if you want, you can take your stump. Yeah, you can soften it a little bit. But I'm barely even touching. It's just, it's on its own weight. You can cross it. See, that's all. It's just the weight of the stump itself. Nothing else. But what you'll find is if you get into the dark part, you're picking up that graphite so it's not as black. You follow? So then you're going to have to come back with your pencil. See what I was talking about in terms of ways to hold it? See how I'm holding it now? Okay, see it? You know, we got the black back. Okay, now over here you're going to have, coming from here, from this middle point, you're going to have some kind of shadow going out over here. Light's coming from this direction. Okay, and that's going to be real black. Just blacking it in. Now we're sketching, remember? We're not drawing. See how black that gets? That's the shadow. Shadow is always darker than shade. This is not a shadow. That's shade. Okay? So now you're seeing, you, as you're, we're doing this, you're watching how different ways I'll hold the pencil. Okay? And then the top... You're going to have the inside of the rim to get thickness. It comes over and it dies because this is the top. So it sort of dies in there. A little bit of a shower, not much. And then that's going to be light because that's in the direct light. See the difference? Okay, now we've got our can. Bingo. And you do the same thing with a cone. Okay, you got a cone. Got your bottom. Got your lips. And then this. It comes shaded over here on the side of the cone. And then that does the same thing. It's a circular shape. If you're doing a box, got that. Now we're doing a perspective of some sort. Like that. You're not going to see the top. You're not going to see the bottom. There's a perspective. It comes this way. And then this way. Now this side is in darkness. Leave this side in light. You can crosshatch, do it however you want. Just eventually get it all blackened in, and then you're going to have a shadow. Now, when this shadow comes out, now watch. There's the bottom of the box. So the shadow is going to come out, and it's going to hit. This back part, the top part, comes down. Hits a point, and then it goes back. So then you're going to have your shadow like such. Now, if you actually set this up, 
there's your shadow. Now suddenly, see how the box sits down on something? Okay? Now perhaps it's on a table. Well, the table's going to be a little lighter, or whatever it's sitting on. There you go. Now the box is totally sitting on something. See it? Now when you have, you can set this up at home on your kitchen table or whatever, and get a light like this, or a spotlight, regular incandescent, set a box or a coffee cup or something on a table, shine that light on it and draw it. Then you'll see the shape, the curvature of the coffee cup that's around, and you'll also see this shadow cast by your light, and you can practice on that. Okay now, trees, I can't stress this enough. Look at trees. When you're out taking a walk, driving in your car, you're going down the highway, anything, look at all the different kinds of trees and shapes there are, okay? You got a pine tree. It's going to grow vertically, like so, okay? That's going to be broader at the bottom than it is up here at the top. Okay? Because these are older branches and they're growing out farther. Okay? And this is young growth up here. Well, there are different ways of doing this. You can just take and do little doodlies like this. Okay? And then maybe the branches curl up a little bit or something. It's going to be darker underneath. See? Then it'll be darker underneath the branch. Then you're going to have your trunk inside, like so. There's the trunk, and it gets out the bottom. And just do like this. See, that gives you the indication of it. Don't need to color all this in. You can have a tree branch that comes across, and then the tree branch in the background, and that defines the trunk itself. See, it's dark underneath. Like so, just little doodlies. That gives you the idea. There you go. You got a little pine tree. It's still growing a lot more work to do. Now the difference between sketching and drawing is this. Now if this was a, a drawing, you'd sit here and you'd make every little, every little pine needle. And you'd spend a lot of time doing it. So every little needle. You're going to come out like that. Just little short strokes. They don't all go the same way. Then there are other uh, conifers, fir trees, pine trees, whatever, that have these like little bushel things. They come out on the end, and that's their growth. They go like that. Okay? Almost like a little flower, and then another one comes out. And they're all different. Okay, now if you've got an oak tree, look at the leaf of an oak tree. Look at the leaf of any tree and it will dictate the shape of the tree itself. Okay, here's a willow. And a willow goes like this, you know, it's a real droopy kind of a thing, just doodling along, and it just goes like that. But it gets kind of round on the top, maybe a little bit, but there are all these little vertical strokes, and then you're going to have little dark spots where the sun doesn't get in here. And we'll go up in, and you just keep doing that. And pretty soon, Just keep doing it. They're not regular. Nothing's regular. Tree, just trees, clouds, mountains, no two are alike. Okay, every tree is going to grow different. Come in, a little dark in here, a little dark in here. Pretty soon, then a willow tree is going to go out a little more like that. A little wider down at the base. They, get, they can get large and fat out the bottom. Then you're going to do the same thing. Just kind of shade the sun comes from over here. It gets dark. And then if you want, maybe you got a shadow cast by the tree. There, see how the difference is? See, it's a little softer and it's a little darker. That's your shadow on the tree. Look, it goes back like this. That tells you where the sun is coming from. But this is sketching, okay? We're not drawing, we're sketching. If you were drawing, you would draw every little leaf every little leaf. And that's the willow. It's this long, slender thing like that. Those are willows. Now you take a eucalyptus, okay? Eucalyptus is going to be like this. They're just a little fatter, you know, than a willow. 
Then you take other leaves, like maybe an elm or an ash. Their leaves sometimes are like this. Go to a little point. And you got a vein coming down. And there's an elm or an ash leaf. Okay? So you've got all these different shapes. Now if you look at, say, a California live oak. Their leaves are, okay, you can say, okay, look, we've got the elm and the ash. Now, another one is like this. Very big. That could be a cottonwood, but it's more bulbous. It's fatter. But it still comes to a little tiny point. A sycamore leaf is kind of broader. It has like little fingers that come out. Okay, and the old cottonwood is this. But these are both very fast. Okay, the willow is a fast growing tree, it needs a lot of water. Cottonwood, a lot of water. Sycamores, they prefer a lot of water. Your elm, your ash, trees of that sort, less water. They're very hardy, very deciduous, hardy trees. And of course, an evergreen, or a fir tree, or a conifer, if you will, they stay green year long. They're, they're very, they never lose their leaves. Deciduous trees, these little guys fall off. Okay, and all the new growth the following year. Now an oak tree, like a California live oak, their leaves are scalloped. You follow? Okay. And if you look, it'll have a vein, but it's still scalloped like that. Very regular. Okay. As I said, moving right along, change camera position. We're still learning about this sort of thing here. Okay. I'm sure you can see all this. Okay, now we were talking about the oak tree, correct? Correct. Now an oak tree, if you look at one, California live oak particularly, they grow... They're all over the place. And they're big, big branches like this. Okay, but then everything, the tree grows in such a fashion there'll be a bunch of stuff here, a bunch of stuff here, a bunch of stuff over here, a bunch of stuff over here, but they grow like the leaf, scallop. And they kind of wander off, they'll send a branch way over here, and they'll do a bunch of stuff like that. But you still have them. They have a very, uh, I don't know how to say, the bark peels in chunks. There's nothing smooth about it, like on a birch tree, which is relatively straight. It's smooth. A few little white spots here and there, you know, and then some little dark. The bark is kind of peeling off, you know, so it gets a little of that kind of thing, see? Yeah, that could be that. Now, on an oak tree, you kind of have these little short things like that, and that gives the texture to the tree itself. And then it, it grows out pretty wide at the base. Then you might have some, you know, you know, some grass. And that's just part of, you know, you just sketch the grass in it. Little things here and there. And it does that. Grass grows up and bends and so forth and so on. But this is all just sketching. That's all you're doing is sketching. You're not doing a formal drawing. If you're doing a formal drawing, you're going to be going Here's a blade of grass, here's one, here's another, here's another, here's another. And then, oh, this guy bends over there, and this guy might do that and fall down, and do that. And then you have, you know, and then the grass sometimes grows in little clumps. See? Like that. And these are all representational kinds of things. Uh, if you look at a tree sometimes, you can just draw shapes like this. Here's a shape. Here's a shape. Here's another shape over here, like so. Then you got a tree trunk that comes up and it goes out. Then you have little branches underneath. Here's the dark underside of the tree. Here's the dark underneath here. And then maybe you just have, just draw lines. This is representational. Draw lines. But before long, and then you got a thing up here. There's another one. There's a dark spot in there. A little dark under here. Just loose. Like so. Okay, and then you got tree branches. 
dark in between. Oh! Suddenly you've got tree branches that go through here. And another branch. Leave it white. See? Suddenly you have branches. Those are the white is the branch. Okay, and underneath is all dark and it goes up and down. And then you can just go. This is all for your own reference if you're out in the field uh, sketching for a subject. Okay, you can do your tree just real loose like that. Okay? You go back and maybe you're going to do a final drawing when you get back. And you might even, just for your own reference, you might want to take some photographs of the tree. You know, showing the scallops if it's an oak or something of that nature. And then if you have something like uh, an elm, they can grow rather tall, and then they branch out like that, and then over here a branch might come, but the branches do this. They're not, and if they're coming toward you, they go up and then back down. See that? If a branch goes out from the tree, it's going to go like that. Or they might go on up, and then little branches keep coming off as it gets taller and taller and up towards the top. And then, like so. But see, now watch. See, I've got one side of the pencil flat. And watch what happens. That creates a chisel edge. See, if I turn it, see how it gets different? Then you get down here and it's fatter. So you take it like this, and then turn it, and it gets smaller. So you start fat, get smaller. And then out here, you're going to have little, little leaves that create clusters and such. And just, you can do it this way, you can do it, you can lay it flat, okay? Go underneath there. Alright, there's the bottom of the tree, and then I'm on top. You don't always have to go the same direction, you can go back and forth. All this sort of stuff, and then, oh, we got a little dark spot down here. Maybe that's the background, and then come here. Alongside the tree, you got shadows going on back there. Then you got a shadow down here from the tree, see? Like so. And then suddenly you've got this. Then you just drag it around. Doesn't matter. Just take it. Just see how I'm just holding it in some kind of weird fashion? It's just whatever is comfortable at the time. Change it. So use your whole your whole arm and your stuff. Now here's what I'm going to show you with this eraser. Now if you have something, you darken this in real heavy. This gets back to my pet peeve and that's about purists. Alright, now I've sharpened this to a pretty pretty good point. Get it going. See how the tree branches suddenly show up? See that? There you go, you've got tree branches. I hope you can see that. But that's what this little guy can do. And depending on how hard you push it, or what side of it you use, if you can use the side, sure, it's going to take off a big chunk. But if you use the point, See it? See those little fine things? Real fine. I'm at the very point. So this is a tool that you can use. It's very handy and very easy. You see what happens to all that dark stuff? You've got things going through it. Okay? Uh, small shrubs. Just start doing this like so. Keep going. Change your arm position a little bit. And then you're pushing it there. There you're pushing and pulling. But then in the middle of the shrub, see there's the underside of the shrub. It's a little darker. And it's gonna might go up into there a little bit. There you go. Depending on how big you want to make it. And there's a little shrub. And you're you're sketching. Remember you're out in the field and you're not out there doing a final drawing. I have to stress that. When you get back home, you put it on your your drawing table, you're going to be in there just doing little tiny stuff at a time. 
when I used to do horses, one little hair at a time, just like this, and you just keep doing those, and then you get into some shade, you want a fine little point, and then you get gradations, but you keep doing that, and you're drawing every hair. Now, this is, I would have a lot sharper pencil if I were doing the drawing, but you can see my point, okay? So that gives us something to, to look at today. There's with your eraser showing going through the dark, a shrub, and this is just doing little hairs. And then you've got your can here again, got a box showing, okay. see I'm sketching, all right? But that's what you're doing. There you go, you see the shadow. Don't ever forget those guys. But also, don't forget the white. Okay? And then everything in between is all this stuff. This is the shading. You can cross it, too. You don't have to stay this vertical or horizontal. Cross it. Go like that. Cross hatch. See? Notice how I change the holding, how I'm holding the pencil? So it's not all just like I'm writing my name and they're signing my signature. It's completely different, you see? Okay, keep moving it. And I think that concludes for right now our next lesson. Okay, we shall see you all later. And thank you for attending my little How to Hold a Pencil Part 2 class.